The Flash. After nine years of development, multiple directors, and several hundred million dollars, is it any good? Well, not really, but there are some good things. Let's have a look at what worked and what really didn't. I'll let you know when we're getting into them later, but for now I'll start with a quick spoiler free overview. After helping out Batman in Gotham, Barry Allen goes back to working on his father's appeal. He realises he can use his powers to change the past and attempts to do so. However, he soon realises that he's in a completely different universe, one where his mother lives and that there's another Barry Allen. This is also around the time where Zod attacks, as we saw in our universe in Man of Steel. So the Flash seeks out help, finding this universe is Earthbound Kryptonian Supergirl and Batman in Michael Keaton's version. Those two, and both Flashes, set out to defeat Zod and save the world. I'll start with the positives. It's no surprise for anyone to learn that the best thing about this film is Michael Keaton's Batman. He steals every scene he's in. Although it is worth noting that, despite some of the marketing and the trailers, he isn't in the film as much as you would think. However, once the suit is on, it's great to see him back, especially in the fight scenes. You see some of it in the trailers, but they are able to do things that weren't really possible for Batman 89 and Batman Returns regarding the combat, and it is superb. It's a bit member berry, but it was great seeing the Keaton Batcave again. And even though it's filmed in a different location, they did a great job of recreating the look of Wayne Manor. The modern version of his suit looks brilliant as well, especially in action. If you've seen the film Birdman though, there is a degree of irony at seeing an older Keaton in the role again. If you haven't, I would recommend it, it's a very good film. One thing to note, in the trailer Keaton delivering lines like, you want to get nuts, are very different in context in the film and they do fall pretty flat. Overall though, I couldn't help but think all the way through, just make another Keaton film. If he's come back for this, and beforehand for the now cancelled Batgirl, surely he'd do it. Why does it take this for us to get to see him back? We've got Robert Pattinson's Batman films continuing on, so surely Warner Brothers should do this. On the subject of Batman, we do get a little bit of Batfleck at the beginning. You do see him on the bike in the trailers, and his costume there does look superb. Well, when he's on the bike. But his sequence is pretty good, and it's a real shame we didn't get enough of Batfleck over the last few years. Whatever he was in, whether it was Batman v Superman, the two versions of Justice League, the little bit of Suicide Squad, he was always the rare bright spot. His Batman will always be a missed opportunity. The surprise for me, however, was Supergirl. Didn't have much in the way of expectations for her, but she's pretty good. Well, for how little we get of her. She's thinly written, with a rushed introduction, but what we do get is satisfactory. It's just lacking in depth. I wanted a lot more. Given how bad the DCEU has been, that's a compliment. After the unflattering set pictures, the costume looks pretty good in the end as well. But it's very DCEU that it's taken us this long to get Supergirl, and when we finally get a promising version, this is all we'll get before James Gunn takes over. It'd be nice, but given Woman of Tomorrow is likely several years away, I'd be surprised if Sasha Calle played her. She deserves credit here though, she's pretty good. And now, on to the bad. The Flash as a character in the DCU has been okay in small doses as part of the Justice League group, but leading the film? No. Not just that, we get two Ezra Millers, and the whole first hour is spent with a pair of them. The alternative Earth version is so unbelievably obnoxious and annoying to watch, it's unbearable, and his laughter is really grating. The film does attempt to make this observation at one point midway through the film, but given our Barry, so to speak, isn't great either, it really doesn't work. There are moments though where Miller does shine, but he just can't carry a two hour plus film on his own, even with two versions of himself. Naturally for Keaton's Batman, but even whenever Supergirl is on screen, they're the focus and not the titular character. Miller aside, one of the most glaring issues is the CGI. It's appalling. It's a common enough complaint with big budget films these days, but it's particularly bad here. Some of the fight scenes look half finished with old PlayStation style models. 
this one particular sequence of the flash running that just looked absolutely awful. I read an article where the director, Andy Machete, says that it's intentional. Yeah, I don't buy it either, or else you'd have said that a long time ago. It bleeds into the much hyped cameos as well. Remember the creepy de-aging used on Grand Muff Tarkin and Princess Leia in Rogue One? The cameos here have that quality to them, but only worse, and Rogue One came out in 2016. The cameos themselves really aren't worth the hype, and there's only one that I'll talk about in a little bit that I did grin at, but apart from that, it's just poor CGI, and they're so fleeting. The main threat you see in the trailer to Earth is from General Zod, essentially retreading Man of Steel, but for the alternative Earth. Michael Shannon is clearly going through the motions as he plays him, and he really didn't seem to enjoy coming back. Zod is very much just the standard bad guy we must beat. There's no further development for Man of Steel. I'm going to get into some spoilers now, so please skip to the time on screen if you haven't yet seen the film. There are a few things story-wise that I did like. Even though it's a little depressing, the idea of the world being tied to its destiny no matter how many times the two Barrys go back to try and change things, is an intriguing story in of itself. They have the power to go back in time, yet Batman and Supergirl will always die and Zod will always prevail. In a better written, well set up film, this really could have worked well. I also liked our Barry losing his powers. It's always interesting to see how superheroes respond to essentially being normal again and I thought Barry trying to recreate his accident in the Batcave was neat, showing his desperation to regain his strength in the face of the threat that Zod poses. I enjoyed the rescue of Supergirl too, seeing Keaton fighting in the modern suit, as well as the relative ineffectiveness of alternative Barry at times as he learns his powers in combat. The cameo that I said I liked was the Nick Cage Superman. Seeing him in the suit, well CGI'd, and fighting the giant spider as well. I did smile rather broadly at that. The smile did quickly disappear though as I kept seeing the rest of the CGI cameo horror show. Speaking of horror shows, the opening sequence in Gotham with the Flash saving the babies from the collapsing hospital was so strange. The babies themselves looking like cheap plastic dolls didn't help. It was such a demonstrably odd and lengthy scene. I was sat there baffled as he's shoveling food into his mouth and putting a creepy CGI baby into a microwave. But at least we got the Batfleck chase around it, which was good. There are some really big writing problems as well, one of which being that Supergirl really should have just killed Zod, rather than just punching him over and over again in the head. Once he was clearly beaten, she should have just heat visioned him, and that was that. It's a bit weird how quickly Keaton just accepts that Barry is from another universe as well. The film needs him to to keep the pace going, but it's crazy, he just accepts it. He has his weird little spaghetti speech and that's that. I mean, I think I'd have a few more questions personally. The biggest annoyance though is that the whole point of the film is that by the end of it, Barry has learned his lesson. The very lesson that Batfleck taught him at the beginning, that meddling with the multiverse will just cause trouble. The trials and pain that we go through make us who we are and we aren't meant to undo them. After the alternative Barry sacrifices himself, with our Barry having learned this lesson, the film then elects to just have him make a further change to ensure that his father wins his appeal and, surprise surprise, ends up altering things yet again. We see him learn his lesson and then he does it all over again right at the conclusion. It doesn't matter how good his intentions are or how big or small the change was, he still makes the same errors. What was the point of the film after all? Overall then, The Flash is a bit of a mess, and an expensive one at that. However, it is worth seeing if you're a fan of Michael Keaton's Batman, but beyond him, don't expect too much. There is an interesting film in there about Keaton's Batman coming out of retirement, saving Supergirl, and the two of them teaming up together to fight an extraterrestrial threat. Problem is, it doesn't have Barry Allen at all. And that says it all. Have you seen The Flash? Let me know what you thought down below. I'd really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe and thank you very much. Take care and have a great day.